Hi there, it's back to Mike here and in this video I'm gonna go through the three most common ways on how to charge your electronics when you're out on a bike tour. Through a solar charger, a dynamo hub or a battery pack. And by watching this video I'm sure you'll find the way that suits your needs the best when you're out on your bike tour. So let's start with the first type of charger and that is a plain old battery pack. And the biggest pro with using one of these is that these are pretty much available everywhere in the world. So if you were to lose it or if it would malfunction on you, you can get hold of one pretty much anywhere. Plus you know what you're getting since almost all battery packs have these four LEDs that indicate how many percent is left in that specific battery pack. So you're able to ration with the small amount of power you still have left in the battery pack in the end. If you're touring in a developed country you'll most likely have access to a wall socket at least once every day so that you're able to Plug in your electronics and your battery packs at least once every day. So I try to stay at campgrounds at least once every third day or so. And while I'm there I make sure to plug in all my electronics and my battery packs. So that everything is charged up when I leave there. The same goes with when I'm stopping for lunch either at a restaurant or outside of a supermarket. I try to charge up as much as I can during that hour and I basically have no shame when it comes to this. I just plug in everything I can while I eat lunch. And remember if you have to choose between charging your electronics or your battery packs always make sure to charge your electronics first since charging your battery packs always comes with some sort of energy loss. So it's better to charge your phone or your camera directly and then plug in your battery packs. So how big of a battery do you actually need to bring along on your bike tour? Most battery packs come in a size up to about 26,000 milliamp hours or about 100 watt hours. 100 watt hours is the maximum amount that you're able to take on a flight. So what I usually bring along with me is that I take two of these battery packs that are between 10,000 and 20,000 milliamp hours. With that said, this is basically overkill for most people, but I really need a lot of backup power with me since I do daily vlogs from my bike tours. So I really need to charge up my GoPro, my drone and the rest of my electronics each day. However, there is actually a practical benefit of bringing two of these. So if you're staying at a campground, you can let one of the power banks charge off the electronic post outside of your tent and charge your electronics inside of the tent off the other one. Another thing to look out for when getting a battery pack is to get one that has quick charging capabilities. So what you want to look out for is one that has either USB-C, PD or Power IQ inputs. That way when you have access to a wall socket you're able to charge your battery pack up to three times faster than if you have one with just a regular USB input. The second type we're going to talk about is this one, a solar charger. And the most important question we need to ask ourselves here is where are you going to be cycling? For instance, if I was doing a tour up here in Scandinavia, I would never consider bringing one of these. Although the sun is pretty much shining all through the day, the sun is still standing so low so you won't be able to use the solar charger at its full potential. However, if you were to do a tour in a more southern country where the sunlight is more intense, this would be a good option for you. The second issue about using a solar charger is that you need to angle the solar charger directly at the sun to be able to use its full potential. And if you're just placing it on top of your rear rack like many bike tours do, you're just going to be able to use about a third of the solar charger's potential since the angle isn't optimal. If you're thinking about charging your phone off your solar charger while you're on your bike, 
I would advise you not to. Since the health of your phone battery is best off when it gets a steady input of power from a power supply. So let's say if you're cycling in a day where it's cloudy and sunny half of the time, going in and out of those clouds means that your power supply is going to vary a lot. So the best solution here would actually be to connect a battery pack to the solar charger and then charge your phone off the battery pack in the evening. Going in and out of power during the day is gonna harm your battery in the long term. Getting a new battery pack is a lot cheaper than getting a new phone battery. So if you were to go with a solar charger I would definitely advise you to get a pretty large one. The one I have is only 6 watts. Under optimal circumstances I'm only able to get about 1 amp of it so it basically takes forever to charge my phone when I'm using it. Instead go with a foldable one with about 20 watt output. That way you'll be able to charge your electronics at a much faster pace. And the last one and the most expensive one of the three is a Dynamo Hub setup. First you have the cost of the hub itself and that's probably gonna set you back a hundred dollars and when you calculate in all the cables and the fact that you basically have to build a whole new wheel you're probably looking at spending over $300 in the end. Another downside to using a Dynamo Hub is that it's very heavy and it's gonna add about 500 to 1000 grams to your bike setup and basically all of that weight is gonna end up right onto your front wheel. So you're gonna be a bit front heavy. It's also gonna add a bit of a drag and slow you down in the end. Not much, but still a fair bit. A Dynamo Hub works great if you're touring in a flat, well-paved surface. But if you were to run into some hilly sections or some technical sections, your speed will most likely drop a bit and you won't be able to get the full potential of the Dynamo Hub. And a Dynamo Hub is also well suited for those times when you're touring in a remote area where the sun doesn't shine so much and you don't have regular access to a wall socket. Look, I'm not an expert when it comes to this and it really varies from situation to situation. But there are a couple of situations where it's really a no-brainer which type of method you should go with. The first situation is that if you're new to bike touring and you feel like you don't want to invest a lot of money into your bike touring setup yet. It's best to go with a battery pack since they're cheap and you can also use them in other circumstances. A battery pack is also best if you're going on just an overnight tour or a weekend tour. And even if you're going on a week long tour and you're planning on staying at campgrounds or a hotel, you're going to be just fine bringing a battery pack. However, if you're planning on going on a longer month long tour or so, I would advise you to check into a solar charger or a dynamo hub. Then it might be worth the investment of getting one of those. With all that info, just a small disclaimer here. These are my personal opinions and I know this can be a pretty controversial topic. There's really no type of charging that's best for all needs. It really depends on what type of tour you're planning on doing and where in the world you're planning on doing your bike tour. So if you have any questions about the ideal charging solution for you, please leave those questions in the comment section below and either I will be able to answer them or someone from the wonderful community surrounding this YouTube channel might be able to help you. And I'll also leave a couple of useful links to solar chargers and battery packs in the description below. And with that said, until next time, have a good one.